If you have received a medical or dental school offer and are preparing this summer to start, firstly, congratulations. But in this video, we're gonna talk about five things that you can do to prepare during the summer to make sure you hit the ground running when you start in autumn and make sure that you smash your first term at medical or dental school. Tip number one is take a break. It is so important to feel energized and relaxed and ready to start what is going to be a difficult and maybe a shock to the system when you start this course. So I would recommend that at least a week before, just make sure that you are well rested, relaxed, maybe go and get some sunshine and just do whatever you need to do to make yourself feel as good as possible for when you start the course. Both times when I went to medical school first and then dental school, I made sure the week before that I kind of really prioritized rest. I typically went away for a week and doing that meant just that I felt generally pumped on life and just energized and ready to go and meet new people. So a great way to put yourself in the right frame of mind to start university in the right way. My second tip that you can do over this summer is learn to cook. It is such an important life skill. You will see the difference at university between those who can cook and those who can't and the standard of meals that they eat. Now money will be a big factor when you're at university. So if you can learn to cook, batch cooking, healthy meals that are nourishing and that you enjoy will make a big difference to that because obviously if you can batch something big that you are very good at cooking, it means that not only will you eat well, you'll have something healthy, Healthy, it's cost effective and it means also it will save time because if you have a big batch of something of course you can just reheat it and reuse that rather than having to cook fresh every single time. The pro move is to assemble a group, hopefully your housemates, who are all able to cook to a reasonable standard and take it in turns to batch cook, which means that you basically have to do it for one night and that means that you have all the responsibility then, but then for however many are in the group, the rest of the nights, the other three or four, whatever it is, can take care of that and then you can relax and know that you'll be reasonably well fed without having to make any effort. The third thing that is actually really useful is to develop your critical thinking. At medical school, you will be required to analyze things, assess whether resources are reliable, and just generally understand from maybe a study whether that is well conducted enough for you to rely upon that data. Now, to develop your critical thinking skills, you can do anything from read some medical journals to come up with some ethical dilemmas that you can find and kind of work through those in your head. But on YouTube, there are plenty of videos and uh, kind of small courses to help develop your critical thinking. Now, the best free one that I would recommend, I'm a big fan of Peter Atia. He's a longevity doctor who has a really great podcast, but he does a whole series of what he calls studying studies. So search Peter Atia studying studies, and they will teach you how to think critically when you see a piece of medical evidence. And it's a really great way to kind of get you into that mindset. Now the fourth tip is probably the most important life skill that you can develop, and that is developing your communication skills. There are some, what we call, force multiplier skills that I believe, no matter what industry you're in, if you can hone them, you will be absolutely rock solid in whatever industry you go into. But for communication skills, it is so important. You are speaking to patients, to if you're at university, to lecturers, to various people, and your ability to get your message, convey your message, the, in the most succinct way possible is so important. Now ways that you could practice this are maybe joining a public speaking club or maybe a local debate society or even mentoring. If Even if that's just helping people go through what you have just spent the last year going through, which is the application process, I'm sure you have some wisdom that you can impart on people. But I would say the biggest thing that developed my communication skills were teaching and doing something like this. So presenting on camera or when I do on my online coaching program to the students who are trying to apply to medicine, when I'm doing some live teaching or uh, big seminars. Those are the biggest things that make you think about the way that you put your message across. And it often occurs by when you communicate things badly and, people, and they're unclear and you get the feedback of people asking you hundreds of questions because they're confused by what you've said. That is a good way to hone your skills and make sure that your communication is super crisp and really clear. And finally, number five, and probably the most important one is learn how you like to learn. One of the other force multiplier skills that I talked about is learning. So I would, I'll tell you them now. So it's usually speaking, so communication, 
writing, also communication, but a different form, and um, the ability to learn, as we we're about to discuss now. Then they also say arithmetic, so the ability to use basic numbers. And then finally, they say coding, which maybe for medicine will become relevant, but not right now. But your ability to learn is equally so important. One thing I will tell you is that when you start medical school, it will be a shock to the system. Not just the volume of information that you need to digest, but the depth as well. So one of the biggest mistakes and the hardest transitions is going from A-levels where I personally used to love having notes in my own handwriting, I could color code them, and it was all very beautiful and neat. And I spent so much time just writing where I could have been reading, learning more actively, and just using that time to get the information into my brain in a much better fashion. One of the biggest tips I can give you for medical school is that you will not have time to write out all of the information that you get given in your own neat little handwriting. So try and find a way that you can learn and make things stick without necessarily having to copy everything down. Now that could be, it doesn't mean that you're not making notes, it could be anything from drawing uh, mind maps or maybe using Anki notes or things like that where you are um, testing yourself constantly, but try and find a way of doing stuff that's efficient but works for you. So if you are going to be mentoring anybody, you might want to send them in the direction of this video where I tell you all the resources that you need to successfully apply to medical or dental school in the UK. Otherwise, I wish you the best of luck with your start of your term and hope you go on and smash medical or dental school. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video.